welcome to this week's Ask Charlie. I am really excited that I'm going to be showing you how to do a little bit of sewing this week. I thought we would do something different, We're actually going to alter Simon's Cricut trousers, but I thought it would be really useful to share with you just a simple way to um, take up a hem. And you can use the method for a sleeve, for a jacket, whatever it might be. I'm just showing you on um, a pair of Cricut trousers because I seem to be forever altering them. I have got Simon's Cricut trousers here and I'm going to show you how to take them up. So Cricut trousers are something that come as a standard length. They tend to be really long and always need altering, I have found. So you need to put the trousers on inside out, turn up the hem and then pin carefully. You just need to do it on one side. Pin, the size laughing. Put your pins in all around. You just you can just do the front, so just maybe put three pins. Now I've made these slightly longer, as you can see, because once he's got his shoes on, that will then be the perfect length. So you saw me pin them up on Simon. Really important when you pin things up or you're trying to shorten something or alter it, to, to, to put it on inside out and then that is the right way round for you to stitch because you're going to stitch from the inside so the seam won't show. So I'm going to show you how to do like an invisible hem as it were. So this is the inside and that is the turn up and I've just got my pins in there. Now you could machine stitch it but it will look quite obvious. You could do a hem like this one but I'm going to show you how I hand stitch it and I find particularly with children it's great because you can then alter the length as they grow. Obviously Simon is not going to be growing anymore so I could snip it off but I want to show you this method. So I've got my pins in there and I'm going to show you to start with using a blue thread which obviously you won't actually use the blue thread and I'm just going to put a knot in the end of my thread. And I'm going to show you with this so you can see the thread against the white and then I'll take it out and do it with the white thread. So I'm going to move you down so you can see and get you up close and you can really see the stitches that I am doing. So I have got my knot in the end of my cotton and I'm going to start on this side seam here. So I'm just going to go in through that seam and you want to just catch the seam, bring your needle up and through and then it doesn't matter how much you take of this because that is the turn up but when you are taking from this fabric you just want to take a tiny tiny, you just want to catch it so really it is just a couple of strands of the fabric that I have got in my needle. Can you see right there? Just a tiny amount. Pull your needle through and then you can catch more from this side. And it's your going. Just make sure that your hand is flat and you're not stitching ruckles. We don't want ruckles. And then again, let me move that out of the way. I just have caught there in my needle a couple of threads like so and then I'm going to go up there and I'm going to catch a couple. Can you see that? Like so. So that is how I do my invisible stitching and I'm just going to show you on the other side there is no blue thread coming through and it's 
just caught a tiny, tiny bit there. That's fine because when it's hanging down, nobody is going to notice that. So that is a really good way of just a really simple turn up on a cricket trouser or something, you know, you can use it for, for any, anything, sleeves, whatever it might be. So now I've done it with my blue thread, I'm actually just going to snip that off and pull that through. And then I'm gonna do it properly with my white cotton, which no one will see. And I will show you exactly how I do that the whole way round the trouser leg and then how I do the other one as well and how I measure to get it right. So I'm using a double thread because it just makes it a little bit sturdier using the double. And well, thread my needle like that. Get them roughly even. Now you can do a knot like this and just twist it a few times. Or you can do the knot around the needle, but I will show you exactly how I do knots in more detail. Right, so again, I'm just going to, like I started with the navy, I'm just gonna go up through that side seam and tuck my knot in there. And then it doesn't matter how much I catch on this side, just like I did before with the navy, just a couple of threads on my needle and pull it through, ensuring that I've got this flat and not ruckled, really important. And just catch a couple of threads from that inside of the trouser leg. And try and keep your stitches as even as you can. So you get a pattern with your stitches. It doesn't need to be exact. You don't need to measure it, but just use your eye to kind of work out how even it is. Now it's really important as well that you don't pull your thread too tight because then it will cause gathers. You just want to have an even consistency to your stitching so it doesn't pull on the inside. So don't over tighten it, but at the same time, you don't want to have any bagginess because that won't help um, having kind of loose stitches. So just repeat the process whole way round. When you're working with a double thread, you do need to make sure that your threads are together and they're even. And it is practice. So you can practice doing this on something that's not important. And just practicing your stitching when you've got a quiet moment. I've been sewing for many, many, many years now. If you get a little loop, your thread like that, you can just work out which one it is and pull it. That's the only downside of using a double thread when you're hand stitching. Sometimes the threads don't always pull through together as evenly as you'd like. You can always put your thumb and index finger or middle finger there onto the stitch and just that helps guide it through and you don't over tighten and cause that gathered effect. So you can just just do that and it 
just helps, I find. And I've got my middle finger on the inside there under where I am picking up my threads from. So my finger is there working on the other side. And that also helps me not take too much thread and I can feel if I'm pricking myself, if I've gone through too far. It just works having that finger on the inside, kind of like a guide. As you're going, check your work and check that the middle of that crease is in line with that crease and just check that you're going sort of the right, the right way, you haven't suddenly veered off. Just keep an eye that you haven't gone off at an angle because it's much easier to rectify a mistake if you catch it early, otherwise you've got to sort of unstitch the whole lot and start again. You just you know, keep going with your stitches as evenly as you can, just catching a tiny amount from this side. So when you get to the side seam, when you've gone all the way around to half halfway point, again, try and make sure that that is lined up with your side seam as much as possible. And then you know that you're on track. And then just carry on with your stitches, just like you have. And keep on going. You might run out of thread and that's fine. You can just tie a knot and then start off again. Now, when you get onto the other side, just try and straighten the trouser leg. I'm going to take out my pins and just pop them onto this side, just as a guide. So I'm going to put one in there and they're just helping me. like so and then keep on stitching <laughs> I've worked my way around I've just moved the pins and they're just there as a guide just to help me hold the fabric in place it's not the easiest fabric to work with I've got a slight ruckle there so I'm just going to use my finger just to sort of tease it out and I can get away with it it's not a big one just by smoothing it there, using my finger. Can you see? We are almost done. The tiny little bit left over. And so now in this side seam, I'm just gonna take a little bit of a bigger chunk and catch there like that. And then this is always the way I tie off. I just do a loop. And there I've got my other loop. And I'm going to put my needle through the centre, like that, and pull it. Now I'm also going to, and this is really difficult to show you, I'm just going to catch, so I've got my loop which I have gone through there you can see my cotton on it on the loop Hang on, let's make it a bit bigger and you can see 
more clearly. Hang on. Let's just tease that loop. Like so. Okay, so there's my loop. And I've gone through my loop. But I'm going to now make a second loop. And I'm going to pull that first loop tight. And I've got my loop here. And then I'm going to put my needle back through the middle of that second loop that I created like that and pull that tight. Now that is really jolly secure and I'm just going to snip off there and that is one leg done. So now for the second one. So I have got my two trouser legs. This is the one I have altered. This is the one that is still to be altered. Now I could have pinned these both on Simon, but it is actually easier, I have found, to get them accurate by doing one leg and then, so up here is folded in half and it's even and you've got your legs straight and flat. You don't want this one twisted the other way because then they won't be even. And just flatten them out. And then you can measure from that turn up. And actually it's quite good with this big turn up because you can see exactly what I'm doing. And you want to get those turn ups even. So it will take a little bit of fiddling. Don't rush it. Just make sure that they are the same on this side and that side. And then you can pop your pins in. Now I am sure nobody will be checking Simon's Cricut trousers to the last millimetre, but you want to get them as even as you possibly can, and then you can put your pins in. Again, getting that seam there, that middle crease in the middle of your turn up. And then the last pin in there. You can use as many pins as you want to keep it. I mean, I normally, to be honest, don't stitch with pins at all. I just guess it now after years of practice. And you want to do exactly the same with this trouser leg as you did with the first one. So I'm just going to get that seam on there, catch it. Up I come. And again, have your hand inside holding it like this and use either your index finger or your middle finger on the inside here to hold it and work as a guide for your finger and the needle. And just go all the way around. But again, checking that it's level all the time. Don't rush it. Take your time. Put some nice music on. Put something interesting on to listen to. Quite difficult when you're sewing to watch TV. It could be done, but you can get distracted. Keep looking up. So I find you know, the radio perfect or an audio book or something like that for my sewing jobs because you do need to keep your eyes on what you are doing. So there we are. I have turned the trouser leg the right way round and you can see there's my line of invisible stitching and you can't really see from this side. 
Now, if I wanted to do a perfect job with size cricket trousers, because he obviously isn't going to grow, I could have chopped this and done a smaller hem. But do you know what? This is good enough. It's absolutely fine. And it hasn't taken me too long to do. So hopefully he is happy and they are the right length. Good enough for him. Oh, there he is. Good enough for him. Happy with his shortened cricket trousers. And at least now... One six inches shorter than the other. <laughs> but we haven't told you about that. He's so cheeky. Hopefully now he won't trip over because they were too long before. Simon is really thrilled with his cricket trousers. He's now not going to trip over and hurt himself, which is super. And he is ready to go and play and have fun. Now I've got some exciting news to share with you. I'm going to be running a two day sewing course in July. So I use um, Teachable for all of my courses. So the videos are all pre-recorded and they will be available for you on the 19th and 20th of July in the morning for you to watch. And then I'll be doing live Facebook uh, sessions on the Monday and the Tuesday at 7.30 UK time. So I hope that that works for people in America and possibly people in Australia as well. So I've picked that time and there'll be two live sessions where you can ask me any questions and I'm here to help you. And then you have got the content on Teachable for lifetime. So you can go back and look at those videos and um, you know see the method. We're going to be doing basic sewing. So, you know, threading needles, knots, through to making a peg bag, hemming things, um, making a simple repair, stitching on a button, just the basics to get you going. And um, I just thought it'd be a really useful two days. Now, if you are away, don't panic because it will all be saved. It will all be pre-recorded, even the lives. And if you have questions, I'm really happy for you to message me another time. So if it's not convenient, do still sign up, do join the course because you can do it any time that suits you. I'm just gonna be live for those two days because I find it really helpful to be live to answer you know, as many questions as I can and share methods and things with you. So hopefully uh, lots of you sign up for that. I'm really excited about doing it. I have been sewing for many, many years. My first sewing machine, I actually bought in a junk shop with my pocket money in Inverness and I was seven and it was a singer. It didn't have a foot pedal. I had to turn the wheel. I just loved it. I made all sorts of things. And I actually did design A levels, specialised in fashion and had one-to-one -one dressmaking for two years, which was just an incredible opportunity. I made a lot of, a lot of clothes, a lot of dresses. I specialised in evening wear. And then I went on to study a fashion degree, which I didn't complete. That's a long story. But anyway, I love sewing and um, I make all sorts of things. I do a lot of tapestry as well. I find that incredibly therapeutic. Anyway, I'm waffling, but hopefully some of you will sign up to my sewing course. Thank you for watching this week's video. Simon was a great sport and wishing you a really, really fabulous weekend and sending lots of love.